the Lord in prayer as we go, uh, as we look to a hymn for a blessing tonight in the word of the Lord. Jesus, we thank you, God, for our pastor. We thank you that he's a man of God. We thank you, Lord, that he's going to bring to us the bread of life. We can't live on yesterday's bread. We've got to have that manna from on high. And Lord, I know, God, that the messenger has brought a, will bring a message tonight that will strengthen us, that will help us. God, help us to have an anointing about us tonight that will reach out and have a hungry heart for your word. Lord, it's not by mind and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, said the Lord. God, we pray that the anointing of God will be upon pastor, that God, he can minister, Lord, without reservation or hesitation. But God, preach the truth in love. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Stand with me, you can can. You can already stand. God bless you. Sing a chorus. We're back at the children's church. You may be dismissed. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ain't the Lord wonderful? Lord, say, Lord, bless the children's workers. And they need it. Trust me. They need it. Praise the Lord. Exciting tonight. I want to try to just go right to the word of the Lord. Excited about baptizing two young people. Two young ladies. Amen. I'm glad we waited till tonight so grandmother and great-grandmother can be here. We almost did this Sunday night. For some reason, we put it off for tonight. And maybe that was the reason why. Jeremiah chapter 18, very, very familiar verse. Scripture. We don't, I use that word kind of loosely, I suppose, or I try, maybe I use it carefully because it's dangerous when you get used to the Word of God. When something, when the Word of God is so familiar, it's kind of like a new bicycle. You know, you get a new bicycle. I remember my pickup truck. The one y'all bought me for three years. I don't think I raised a lid on the back of it. Let them all put something in it. And I found myself the other day hauling dirt. It was an accident. It was an accident. That I hauled, I can tell you. Somebody bought a, an apple tree. And I put it in the back of my truck and dirt spilled out in my truck. And so that's why I was hauling dirt. But, uh, but the point being, you get, you know, things kind of get old to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and, and Lord help us when the Holy Ghost gets so old to us. We don't, it doesn't, you know, we just we can kind of just walk around it. And, and when somebody's receiving the Holy Ghost, it don't even shake us up. You know? Help us, Lord. Amen. Amen. Take that new truck, man. I tell you, it just, uh, I, and it used to keep it so clean. I mean, you'll look at it tonight. It's just not clean at all. It's wet, but it's not clean. So we've got to be careful when things get too familiar. Especially, especially the things of God. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1. I've used verses from, from, the, Jer from the 18th chapter of Jeremiah before. I guess everyone has preached about the potters and the clay. And I want to take another stab at it tonight, if I can. Verse 1 said, The Lord or the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my word. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, and the vessels that he or the vessel that he made of clay was mired in the hands of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Simple little thought tonight. I'll try not to be all night. The power is in the clay. The power is in the clay. Let's sing a song and worship it. Just lay your Bibles down if you want to or good. And boy, you can lift your hands and love Jesus just for a moment. Thank you. Lord, I just want to be you tonight. Accept me tonight, Lord Jesus, God. Reach out tonight. Touch this congregation tonight. 
Jesus, I appreciate you tonight. I appreciate you tonight. Lord, bless the congregation. For the next few minutes, Lord, Let it use me, Lord, to minister to us in Jesus' name. Everybody am. say amen. God bless you. You've been seated. Power in the clay. As I said, it's a... Uh, you don't want to get too familiar with the moving of the Holy Ghost. We, we ought to expect God to do great things. We ought to be expecting a moving of the Spirit. But don't be too familiar with it. Jeremiah is told to go to the potter's house. I've always, this, this verses of Scripture has always just stood out to me and, and, and kind of intrigued me. Go, go hear the word of the Lord, he said. Jeremiah goes to the potter's house and there he, he calls him to hear the word of God. And then he went down to the potter's house and said, and he wrought a work on the wheel. He really, he, he really saw the work of God. Or he saw God at work. He saw the work, or saw the, the type of the work. And that the work that he did on the wheel and, and the vessel that he made was mired or barred in the hands of the potter, so he made it again. One thing about God, God gives you another chance. We all ought to say amen. Well, thank you, Lord, for that second chance. I heard a great friend of mine, Brother T.F. Tenney, teach or preach a message on the God of the second chance. I appreciate God and His glory. And so he made it another vessel as it seemed good for the potter to make it. I want to tell you, God wants us to be vessels of honor. God does not want His people to be a vessel of just mud. He wants us to be a vessel of honor. He wants us to accomplish something in our walk with Him. The power, as I said, is in the clay, not in the wheel. It's, not, it's, it's all about the clay. You and me are the clay. When it comes to living for God, don't misunderstand or, or misrepresent what I'm going to say, but the, the power to live for God is in us. I mean, I know we got to have the power of God. Don't misunderstand me. Got to have the Holy Ghost and the power of God. But when the bottom line is, it's all up to you and me. If I want, this has been said so many times from this pulpit and pulpits around the world. If I want to live for God, I can. It's all in me. It's what I want to do. Do I want to live for God? Because it's in the clay that we find the power of yielding. And see, when you find the power of yielding, you find the power to become what you would like to become. You'll never become anything for God until you learn to yield to the presence of God and you learn to yield to the, to the hands of God that molds us. Sometimes we don't appreciate, I know I don't, I, I don't, I don't always appreciate the experiences that I have living for God, I don't always appreciate the tough times. I don't always appreciate the dry times. But we got to learn to yield to the presence of God even in the times that are not so good or what we would classify as not so good. If we're going to become anything for God, if we're going to accomplish anything for God, then we're going to have to learn we have to yield to God. We have to let God touch us. The best potter and the most skilled craftsman cannot do anything with a chunk or a lump of clay that refuses to be molded. The clay has to recognize God's presence. We have to recognize God's presence even in the trying times. We have to recognize God's presence when things are not so good or not so comfortable in our life. We have, and, and that's what I meant when I said sometimes I don't, I don't know how, maybe I don't know how to appreciate 
the things that God is trying to do in my life. And, and but to you can take, like I said, the best potter there is, if the clay refuses to be molded, then the potter can't do anything with the clay. Now I know God can do anything. We understand that. God is all powerful, all knowing, omnipresent. God is everywhere at the same time. He can be blessing this church and the other church across town all at the same time. He's everywhere. He's God. And I know He's got He can do anything He so desires to do. But God will not take advantage of our will. If I could scotch my foot, I could rebel. I could hold back. I could refuse. And I'll never, and if I don't yield, then I never have the power to become. If I want to become, you've heard me say it probably many times that my, especially as a younger man, I guess I've gotten older now and, and, and all it may not be quite as uh, fresh in my mind, you know, and uh, but I've always said I want to be the best preacher the United Pentecostal Church has got. And, I, and, and in order for me to do that, I've got to learn to appreciate even the tough times and the difficult times in, in the ministry and in living for God. Everything is not uh, ease and I'm, I'm choosing my words carefully because I don't want to be offensive. But everything is, is not going along uh, smooth for us all the time. There will be situations. And it's the, the best craftsman there is cannot work with a piece of clay that refuses to yield, that refuses to be molded. The power to become and the power to resist I have the power within me to become something great for God, but I also have the power within me to resist the hands of God. Am I making sense to you? God said to Jeremiah, I will cause you to hear my word. But I sometimes we just ain't listening. Sometimes we just... We don't hear God's word because we don't listen for God. And many times we're too busy trying to change God's mind. We're too busy to, to trying to straighten God out. But if we're going to, sometimes when, when God wants to teach us faithfulness, when God wants to teach us His will, He will carry us through experiences in life that we're uncomfortable with. How many has ever been there? You see, God does that many times teaching us a lesson, molding us to become something for Him. All of us are not going to be preachers. All of us can't do a lot of things, but we can all live for God. They used to have, they had this couple that used to sing a song at Fraser Church, Fraser Apostolic, my brother Harry was there. I think their name was... Bone family. Used to sing a simple little song, Brother Don Johnson. In fact, I think his son wrote the song to Brother Don Johnson and put the song out. We can all love Jesus. We can all love Jesus. That's one thing everyone can do. Doesn't matter who you are or where you came from. We can all love Jesus. Was, was, the, was the name of the little tune. And so God sometimes, when He wants to teach us things, he has to carry us places through experiences that we're not comfortable with. The big difference between knowing and learning. You can know a lot of things in your heart. You can know, or you can know a lot of things in your head. You can have a lot of knowledge of a lot of things, but until you learn the lesson of knowing, learn what God is trying to do. We can know something in our heart, but many times... We, but when we learn the lesson, how many have ever told your kids or you've ever spoke of someone, well, they'll learn. You know, they'll learn. Lessons learned is, is, 
You, when you learn a lesson, it's a, it's a good lesson. You won't forget it. How many ever thought that or, or even said that? You know, you told your son. I had never told mine. But if you tell your son or your grandson, you know, you'll learn, boy, when you have to start buying the tires, you'll learn, you know, to get off of that clutch a little easier. Or you'll learn when you have to start buying your own clothes. You know, teenagers talk, boy, I'll be glad when I get old enough to get out of this house. Well, you just wait. When they get old enough to get out, they'll probably be back. Just hope they don't bring anything with them. When they have to start buying their own food, paying their own telephone, paying their own, buying their own gas, buying their own blue jeans, buying their own. I asked one of the boys tonight, I said, what happened to your pants? He said, nothing. I said, well, it looks like somebody shot you with a shotgun. <laughs> when people have to start doing you, you learn these things. When you learn, when you learn from God, when you learn the lesson that God is trying to teach us, then it's an experience that you'll never forget. I hope I'm making sense to somebody. It be, when you learn something, it becomes a part of you. You learn, and you, you learn not to do it anymore. God guides us through life, learning us lessons in life. Whether we hear the Word of God or not, that depends on what we're looking for. When God, God is moving. God is blessing. And whether we go along with that or whether we hear from God or hear the Word of God, it just all depends on what we're listening for. I've had, you know, I've tried to counsel with people and, and they weren't even listening to me and I know they weren't going to listen to God because they could see me try to tell them something and they're constantly telling me why it won't work. I hate to talk to people that me try to tell them what God can do and they're steady telling me what God ain't going to do. I just want to say, well, why don't you just go jump off a cliff? I sound like that's your only hope. Get, get, if, you, if you don't get out of your home, here's it, get us out of ours. You, you understand what I'm saying? Learning from God lessons when you hear the word of God depends on what I'm wanting. If I don't hear the word, it, I'm probably not listening for the word of God. So when God talked to Jeremiah, Jeremiah goes down and God shows him. Sometimes we feel, I know I, know I have and, and I'm sure you have. I feel like sometimes I just walk in a circle. Am I the only one ever felt that way? I'm just getting nowhere, as they say, getting nowhere fast. Just kind of walking in a circle. Israel March, are you ready for this? 40 years in a circle. 40 years. They just marched around until they learned the lesson that God was trying to teach them. But until all the uh, old heads that had rebelled that had, had just said we can't take the land it's not for us. God lied. Until all that generation faded out, God had a marching in a circle. Sometimes I feel like I just kind of march in a circle. And let me tell you something else we have a problem with. I know I do many times. I'm getting you know, I'm trying to get over it. We have a problem many times with the routine. Just the same old thing. Over and over. Praying the other morning, I was. And I just, I got to thinking. Lord, I'm not sure this is even doing any good. I'm getting up 4 o'clock in the morning. Everybody, well not everybody, but most everybody else is sleeping. Of course, I couldn't sleep no way. So it doesn't matter. I'm thinking, Lord, is this really doing any good? The fact of the matter is, you hear me, hear me real close now. You remember that service we had? What the two would be two weeks ago, Sunday night. Remember that great move of God and people were shouting. And Sister Betty, you just got wiped out. You act crazy. And and no, I didn't even have to preach. I got paid for nothing. Didn't even have to preach. You remember that service? I mean, remembers that? Wasn't that awesome? Did you ever think why? Now, now watch me because I'm setting you up. 
Did you ever think, wow, we don't do that every night? Now listen carefully. The truth of the matter is, our walk with God is not a fired up, fireball walk all the time. It just don't happen that way. The truth of the whole matter is, our walk with God is just an a just a slow, steady. That word steady is very important. Steady burn of a single flame that keeps me going. Services like Sunday night, that don't keep me going. Now I loved it, don't misunderstand. I thought it was a great service. Need a lot of them. But that's not what keeps me going. What keeps me going is that steady pace that I have to pace every day. Whether anybody's shouting, whether the choir's singing, or whether anything's going on out of the ordinary or not, what keeps me going is that little burning of that little steady flame that I feel every day in my prayer room and in my home and in my church office or at these altars. It's just a steady burn of the Spirit. It's not an overflow. It's not a firework stand. It's not a fireplace. It's just a steady burn of the flame of God. It was the power of the routine. I'm feeling like teaching. It was the power of the routine that saved Daniel. It wasn't a great move of God. It was something Brother Mark Daniel did every day. He prayed every... He didn't pray anymore when it was a bad, bad crisis or he didn't pray any less when everything was paid up. Daniel prayed his prayer that he prayed never sped up or slowed down the process of him and God. He just prayed every day. Routinely. Every day. He had a prayer time. Mine just happens to be at 4 o'clock in the morning. All the devils are asleep. No. No. Routine. Isaiah speaks it. He says in 40 and 31, that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The lesson I get from this is mounting up with wings, running and walking and not fainting. It's a steady pace. It's something we do. God knew all about pottery work. That's why he used the illustration from Jeremiah about the vessel and the clay and the pot. The reason I say God knew all about pottery work was because he made man from the dirt of the ground. He knew how to form a vessel. The vessel became marred, the Bible said. The wheel, are you ready for this one? The wheel was willing and the potter was willing. But the power to become was whether or not the clay would yield to the potter. Our power to become what we want to be depends on how willing we are to allow God to work with us. Even in those hard times. So the potter made the vessel again. I believe God has a will for us today. I believe God has a will. I believe He wants to show His will. God has the difference between, are you ready? The difference between mud and a vessel is the clay. It's got nothing to do. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Got nothing to do with God. 
God saves us. He fills us. The rest of it we have to yield to. I'm either going to be a vessel or I'm just going to be a mud ball. That's up to me. I heard a guy saved today and it almost inspired me. I almost had my mind made up that I was going to sing. Y'all just don't give up on me before I retire. I'm going to sing. Get on the but no. Who's that guy, Sister Creasy? I don't. I can't recall his name. That has that uh, uh, affliction in his body. That preacher, uh, civil, civil comes. Not, not brother Odd, uh, uh, but the other one. Arnold. Um, minister. Who? Is that his name? Is that who he is? <laughs> okay. Uh, I was watching YouTube today, and, and and he was on there singing, and I thought. He can't sing. He can't even talk. What being disrespectful? He had that microphone and he was in front of an audience, hundreds and hundreds of people, singing a song about won't it be wonderful that. You couldn't hardly understand his words. Everybody in the audience would boo him and cry. He stopped. <coughs> A minute, and I knew he was fixing to come up with something. He said, I don't want you to feel sorry for me. He said, I'm still in the oven. He said, and God is still in the kitchen. I said, he's still cooking on me. And then he left the hammer down. He said, and for too much longer, he's going to pull me out of the oven. Well done. Not half faith and not medium rare. He's pulling me out. Well done. And I'm going to hear the Lord say, Well done. It's all up to us. Sometimes the difference in a, the mud and the vessel is the claim. How yielding are we to God's Spirit? I'm going to tell you, I just give y'all something. Hallelujah. I believe God wants to make His will known to us. I don't believe it's God's will for His will to be hid from us. Let me tell you, you want me to tell you the will of God for you? I can do it. I, got, I guarantee you, I can do it. His will is you to live for Him. You live for Him, He'll take care of the road the wagon. He'll, he'll take care of the back door. He'll watch your back. You just dedicate yourself to Him. You that seeking answers, seeking situations in your life, you've got situations that you don't know quite how to deal with. What did I say a while ago? That's some of the process. Oh, I wish I was the Pentecostal preacher. Come on, preach. Apostolic. Somebody said, Apple, what? <laughs> Our problem is not finding the will of God in most cases. Our problem is doing the will. I told you what the will of God is. And, and if that don't, if that's not sufficient, that'll do to the sufficient get you. Live for God. That's his will. It's not his will that any perish, but all come to repentance. Many times in in trying to do the will of God, or if I'm using that term loosely, I guess, in trying to find the will of God, trying to do the will of God, many times, as I said a while ago, we're really actually just trying to change God's mind into something else. Like they said the preacher did that time. Remember what they said about the old preacher man? Passed in this church, and he got this letter from this big church, and, and they gave him an invitation to come. They want him to come be their pastor and offered him a chunk of money. I mean, a lot more money than what he was getting at the little church he was at. And he's talking to his wife, and his wife said, well, what are you going to do? He said, well, I'm going to have to pray about this matter, and you go pack. <laughs> While I pray. A lot of times, what we're trying to do is just change God's mind rather than accepting the fact that the will of God is to live for Him. To and totally Give it all to God. 
Let me tell you something. When God puts us on the wheel and finishes with us and mows us and took, He mows us. When He's through with us, we'll be the best possible vessel that could be Amen. when God gets through us. If we'll just stay on the wheel. The struggle, the everyday struggle, doesn't even matter. It don't even count. You know what counts? Is that last surrender to God is what counts. That's why them old timers used to say, help me. They used to, man, they used to have church, everybody testified. Anybody remember that? Everybody. You go to Pocahontas church, everybody testified, and most everybody said. The longest church services I have seen in my life. Pocahontas apostolic church. Them old timers would stand and say, pray for me that I'll make the last mile. The struggle don't matter, children. I hope you understand it. Man. The struggle does, is not what counts. My God, we struggle to pay bills. God ain't got nothing to do with that. We, we, we struggle. Some of you struggle to get up. That ain't, the struggle has nothing to do with it. What counts is that last decision you make. I'm going to live for God. That's what counts. It is. Thank you, sweetie. It is. That's, and that is the main thing. Brother Teddy would like me, because I'm going to use him tonight. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. That's the main thing. The battle doesn't matter. I fight a battle every day. I pray for people that don't even pray for themselves. I cancel with people that don't even listen to me. People call me on the phone. I'm not talking about church members either. I'm talking about just Joe Blow. Call me on the phone and don't want spiritual help. They, they want a hand out. Man, I'm not First National Bank. I'm a preacher. I got what I got for them. They need worse than they need beans and potatoes. Job even said himself that I have found it to be more than my necessary food. The presence of God. What counts is when it comes down to the final line that I draw in the sand and I say Lord here I am and I want you to take me and use me and do with me on that potter's wheel what seems fit for the potter. That's what counts. And I make my mind. I read a story about a guy named Aiken in the Bible. How many ever read about him? There was a battle the people of Ai were so few that it was sure victory. I mean, it was nothing to it. It was a piece of cake. So they said, so they claimed. It didn't work that way. And when the story was told back to the man of God, when they come back and told Joshua, they began to realize the tragedy was the hardness of the heart of one man. And that was the problem. We have to watch what we allow our heart to do. Let me give you just a brief history here just of Ai or of uh, Achan. He was one of the ones, Sister Creasy, that walked 40 years in the wilderness following the men of God. He circled that mountain that I spoke of a while ago and he had eaten the manna from heaven and he saw the pillow of cloud by day and the pillow of fire by night. He saw all the great miracles that God showed just before, listen carefully, I'm going to let you go home here to chill. Just before he was ready to cash in on the victory, he caved in from a heart to heart. He didn't make it. Praise the Lord. We have to make a total surrender to God's will. I want you to remember this. If I didn't miss, if I didn't cross every T right or dot every I here. I know I, I think I'm right. Judas was only 51 days from having his name in the foundation of the city. 51 days. The best I could multiply and add and subtract and divide 
if he had held on 1,224 hours, what a difference the end results would have been if he had just held on to God. But instead, he ended up in the potter's field. We have to understand the power lies right here. Nobody can make me throw in the towel. People can make my life miserable, but nobody can make me say, Lord, I don't love you anymore. Nobody. Nobody can do that. Instead of yielding, the enemy entered his heart and the power of the unsurrendered clay became death and destruction for that man of God. We have to be willing to yield to the power. We have to do it. I can, I, what makes the difference in my life is what I want to yield or what I not want to yield. That makes it, it makes a difference in my ministry. It makes a difference in this church. It makes a difference in my family. It's up to me. Play the piano for me, Sister Chris, if you would. I want you, if you would, to stand with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being so understanding tonight, helping me out. Hallelujah. Lord, help us to be yielding in your hand. Anyone here tonight wants to sharpen up your obedience, if you want to come and talk to Jesus tonight, please do. Please come. Yield to Jesus tonight. Stand and kneel, whichever you prefer to do. Just come and talk to Him tonight. Yeah. 
said if you make me your choice, I'll drive away your every care, and I'll set you free. So I came to him that day, and he took my sins away. Now I don't want nothing here to hinder me. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Clap your hands to Jesus. So thankful for what the Lord has done. We've heard from the Lord tonight. Beautiful word of God. Now we're getting ready to baptize two precious young ladies in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. So with that being said, if you would, let's stand to our feet together. And I want to just say a prayer before we do this, that we'll all just be unified in mind and in purpose. And then we'll just ask the Lord to bless this beautiful ceremony in Jesus' name. Dear God, we love you tonight. We thank you, Jesus. We are gathered here in your name and for your purpose. Lord, we pray a blessing of peace upon every heart in this place. I pray, Lord, that we will be focused upon you as we get ready to lay these precious ladies down in the burial of water baptism to be risen in the newness of life that comes in Jesus Christ. Lord, bless this time and bless these ladies in Jesus' name. Amen.
dismissal prayer. Are there any announcements, anyone that we need to remember in prayer before we're dismissed? Sister. Lighthouse Apostolic in Atoka, Brother Tim Herring's church is having a revival. So if you're free the next couple of nights, uh, tomorrow night, Friday night, he'd love to have you. And I know I've been the last two years and it has been a mighty move of the Lord down there and I know He would be encouraged and you would be encouraged if you would attend. Sister Martha. Sister Amy. Okay, we'll do that. Sister Sarah. Alright, we'll do that. Okay, y'all agree with me. We're going to pray for Sister Sarah. She's standing in for an individual. So we're going to anoint her with oil and we're going to pray at this time. Sunday, this coming Sunday night is youth night. Youth will have charge of the service and Brother Michael Bishop, he's preached here before. He'll be here with us as the youth, as the guest minister. So I encourage all of you to be here, bring family, bring friends, and uh, let's support our youth on youth night. Are there anything else, anything else we need to announce? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, we love you tonight. We are so thankful that you've given us the privilege to be here that we've had the opportunity to freely worship and to hear the Word of God preached. I pray, Lord, a blessing of peace upon every heart that's in the sound of my voice, that as they walk out these doors, that you'll go with them, O oh Lord. That they'll be reminded that when the problems of life come against each of us, that you have not lost sight of us, that you know exactly where we are and that you're still in control. I pray, Lord, for Sister Amy for healing, O oh Lord. I pray for the special need that Sister Sarah brought to our attention, O oh God. I pray for all of these needs, Brother Will Gillum. I pray, God, for him, that you'll touch him. All of those that were mentioned beforehand and those that were mentioned now. Even those unspoken needs that we all have in our hearts, O oh Lord, but we've not spoken them verbally. I just pray, God, you'll touch each one. 
I pray, Lord, for our upcoming youth night, and I pray for our services Sunday. Bless the revival in Atoka and each one here tonight in a special way. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and ask it. Amen. God bless you all. You're dismissed. Thank you.